Hello everybody. We're back at the sewing machine. The sewing machine's over there. We've got a new room. Can you believe it? We moved. We moved over the week. So we are now in Lenine's office. We're sharing Lenine's office. Lenine is the owner of the shop and she's not here very much. And so we just took over her office. Hope she doesn't care. <laughs> anyway, we're growing faster than what we can possibly keep up with, but we're trying our best. And so we had to move some things around. And so um, I just decided I'd just take this little corner instead of that big old room and they can do something else over in that big room. And we can have this cozy little spot. This just goes to show that quilters are very adaptable. You know, they use what space they have. If I had this whole entire room, I'd be using this whole entire room. But if I just have a little bit of space, I can deal with just a little bitty space. I mean, you just deal with what you got, right? So anyway, this just goes to show that if you have just a small area and we just got the machine set up. See, this is our little area right here. We got the little machine set up here and then our pressing and um, our um, cutting station is here, right here together. And then I've got my design. Everybody says, oh, I don't have room for a design wall. Well, we even have a design wall in our little bitty space. So I am so excited. Everything we need is right here. So today I've been taking you through this quilt as I've been doing it. And remember we talked about, here's, here's the block. And we've been talking about, we talked about half square triangles. We talked about these connecting corners. Do you remember that when we did uh -huh. that? And it's labeled on the previous videos. If you want to go look back and look and to see how to do connecting corners, it's on the video title now. Excellent. So anyway, so now I'm ready to start putting on the sashing and the borders. Sashing and borders. So I thought, well, I'm going to bring my people along. So if somebody doesn't understand about sashing and borders, we'll get that covered. This is what the pattern looks like. Uh, beautifully charming. And it's going to be a free pattern when we get this beautiful fabric, this beautiful day collection by Corey Yoder. And it is a beautiful collection. But let me tell you, this pattern I'm keeping in my arsenal because Anytime I have a charm pack, all I have, all this is, is a charm pack, a light background, and a dark background. Something that coordinates with the, the uh, charm pack. So a charm pack is just simply a five inch square. And all I needed was 36. They come with 42, but um, all you need is 36. So you have some left over to play with, to do something fun with. So today, I brought this quilt along. This is a quilt I made, oh, probably 30 years ago. I don't know when. But anyway, I brought it because it's a good example of sashing and cornerstones. These are called cornerstones. When you have a little insert of a square that connects the uh, sashings and it separates the sashing from the blocks. So this, if you put together a quilt and you don't have this, like in this quilt, in for instance, we're not gonna have a block right here where they intersect. We're gonna have one long big piece that goes across there. And that is going to be a little bit more tricky than if we have cornerstones because when you have cornerstones, it's easy to line them up, line your squares up, you see. When we just put a, a, a solid, uh, if this was just solid, it would be hard for us to get these lined up, okay? So because you have the cornerstones, it's a lot easier to get the, the rows lined up. But I'm going to show you a nice little trick. I'm going to put this away. I'm going to show you a nice little trick on how to get your rows straight. This going this way because we won't have anything to uh, measure it up to. The first thing I did was I took my pattern and I laid out my squares. And then I collected them all, and they're all stacked 
in the way that they go on the wall, back on the wall. And so what I've been doing is I laid them here and I've been sewing the sashing on. Now you would think you could just go through and sew the sashing on both sides of all the blocks and then you'd have it all done. But look, over here there's no sashing on this side and there's no sashing on this side. So I've taken all my blocks that are my last row and I've put them away from the ones I'm sewing sashing on. Because these don't get sashing sewn on them at all. Conspiracy. Mm-hmm. So I took, a, it was a little bit of planning. So this block, I sew this sashing to this, this sashing to this, this sashing. You get the idea? This sashing, this sash. Then I ended up here and this had no sashing. So then that leaves no sashing on the outside of the row. That's because if you'll look at the pattern, get my stiletto here. If you look at the pattern, this is the inner border. Now, some people call this sashing. This is not sashing. This is the first border. It goes all the way around the blocks. Let's look at this red one because it's full. So see here, this goes all the way around. The sashings are in here. Okay, now these sashings are the same size as the block, eight and a half inches. These sashings that go across here, if I wanted a cornerstone right there, see, I could put a cornerstone in. But because I want that to have a secondary hexagon, hex whatever, that kind of a pattern, I, I'm not going to put a cornerstone in there, even though you could, and it still would look good, okay? Okay. Uh, to put one in, go ahead and let's do it like the pattern today. And then the next time we make it, we might put some sashings, I mean, cornerstones in there. But for today, we're going to do it like the pattern. <clears throat> so the pattern says that I should cut my um, sashing strips that go between the borders 58 and a half. I could not sew, and I'm telling you, if you do not have one of these in your arsenal, you need to go and come to the store today and get one. There's it's 120 100, reasons why. 120 inches of, <laughs> of uh, measurements here. This is 120 inch measuring tape. So I laid it, my block. I've laid my strips out, and mine measures 59 and a half. Why? I don't know. I've looked and I've checked. My blocks are about an eighth of an inch off. So by the time I get six, that's six eighths. That's almost an inch. But for some reason, I've measured and measured and measured, and it's 59 and a half. Put no, this is a five there. inch block. So it's four and a half sewn in. Oh. So see, here's the block I was talking oh, about. See how it's okay. eight and an inch? I to show the eight people. and an eighth. So that little sliver ends up throwing the whole row off. Well, if this is an eighth off uh -huh. and this is an eighth, eighth off, that's a quarter of an inch right there. Hmm. Two eighths is a quarter of an inch. Oh, yeah, my seam hmm. allowances are a quarter inch. Thank you very hmm. much for checking. Hmm. But anyway. Hmm. So. Conspiracy. I do not have a ruler that is 59 and a half inches long. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, I mean, I'm going to take my calculator here and I'm going to take 59.5 and I'm going to divide that in half and I get 29.75. Well, I still don't have a ruler that long, but my mat is that long. My mat happens to be 36 inches, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold, because I'm wanting twice that. I want it twice the size of 29.75. So what I've done is I've folded my sashing in half. Now my sashing only came 45 wide, so I had to sew two pieces together. Okay? So I'm going to line this up. I'm going to put this on the one right over here. This is the fold. Right here's the fold. I don't want to cut on the fold. Oops. Yeah, oops would be right. I'm going to line that up. And I'm going to cut this 
29 and 3 quarters. Let me get my ruler. I'm going to lay it here. 29 and 3 quarters. Hmm. Now I'm going to make sure it's straight with my ruler too. 29 3 quarters. Can you see? There's my 29 and I'm over 29 and 3 quarters is right there. So I'm going to be, I'm going to square my sashing up. I'm going to go right there, 29. Now this is my fold down here. So when I cut this, this piece I'll sew onto the next strip. But now I have a piece that's 59 and a half inches. See that? Huh. Needs to be a little bit longer than I need. Maybe I've stretched that out. If I were wanting to just take a shortcut and not measure that, but just take a piece longer, sew it on, and then cut it as it yeah, gets I to the end. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Would I come into some shortfalls by doing that? Yes, you would. What, what would you happen? Would have a ripply uh, sashing. Oh, no. Yeah. So like, so, like what he's talking so about. So, this gets eased into the quilt, right? You cut, you cut no, the exact length it, you need. I cut and then, it the exact length and then I pin it. And pin it. So what okay. he's talking about here is this. He's talking about taking a big long piece and laying this on and sewing. And then laying the next one on and sewing. And laying the next one on and sewing. And then coming and cutting them back apart. But he runs the risk of this stretching and the same risk that I took, but mine came out. I cut these eight and a half inches and they fit on my block exactly. There was nothing hanging over. Nice. So nice I don't square know block. how I got eight and a quarter. I mean, eight and an eighth over is what I'm trying to say. I don't know yeah. how that happened. But sometimes, you know, you just can't figure it out and that's just the way life is and you go on, you go with it. Mm. So, if I bring this down, what I must have already brought it down. Yeah, here it is. Brought it down? Yeah, brought it down. Which way does it go? Let me make sure I've got it right. I'm gonna lay it here. And it gets sewed to the bottom of my first let, uh, strip. To the bottom of my first row. And what am I going to do? Pin? Of course. Pin? Of course I'm going to pin. Not a daredevil. I did a quilt block last night, and I didn't use a single pin in it. I what? Just I sewed the whole thing without a pen, <laughs> with no regard to even matching up seams. Did you hear me uh, screaming at you in the middle of the night, or what's the deal? But you know what happened? What? Because there was such a high contrast in the fabric, it looks like all the seams match. Wow. It looks like they match, or they do match? I don't know. They look like they match. Okay. I didn't look close enough to see okay. if they actually do or not. Now, I've pressed all my seams open, but I missed one. So I'm going to go back over here to my iron. Go and press that open. We'll be wearing our bathing suits in our new uh Oh my gosh, room this is a sauna in here. Toasty warm. I'm sweating. My hands are sweating. Why don't we open that door? There's nobody in there. Okay, anymore. let me do that. We're going to go on a field trip, open up this door right here. The closet door? No, that door right oh. there. The closet door. <laughs> oh. I'm so glad you're knowing what's going on. Alrighty, so now I'm just going to pin this. 
You know what I have a feeling? I have a feeling that I really stretched it on my... Like, uh, like when you ironed it or... No, when I put it up here put on, it on, my, the board. on my display board. So do you feel like once it comes off the board, it'll be the right length? I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. Now I like to pin a little on this side and then come down here and pin a little on this side. So you pin, okay. And what I'm doing is I'm catching those uh, seams because they're gonna be towards my feed dogs. And if I'm sewing against a seam, what happens is the feed dogs tend to wanna yeah. go like that when they go across. So what I'm doing is I'm not pinning both sides of that seam. I'm just pinning the side of the seam that goes against the feed dogs. Against the feed dogs. So now I'm going to take, now that I've got a few pins there and a few pins here, and I'm going to hold it up and look, it was 59 and a half inches. Cause look, that fits on there perfect. perfect. Beautiful. So, don't always go by what the pattern says. You have to measure every time. Measuring is so important. And actually, it should be, look what I just did. It's a Monday, you know. Look what I just did. I pinned oh, the wrong side. I see that. I see that. Because it's a solid and it's the same on both sides. I see that. I just pinned my entire thing on upside down. Because you can't tell what's can't. the right side and the wrong side. And it's such a long a piece. Solid. You only have one seam, so you're not, you know what I mean? Right. It's a long and piece. same with batiks, you know, you can't. But. This is real life sewing, guys. This is. This isn't. We make it, and then this we make it perfect and sew it. We this just is sew just as like we go. This is just like being in my sewing room as if I didn't even have Peter here filming. I mean, and you just make adjustments, and you enjoy the process. Oh, your you dog? Might, you might smack yourself in the face a couple times, you know, like that. How silly of me to do that, but I don't do that too I don't often. do that. No. Don't do that. No, don't do that. Yeah, you stop, you pet your dog, you get up and get yourself a drink a of beverage. water. You know, it's play, just like being at home. Play some hip-hop music. I do play music when I am sewing. Um, I don't play hip-hop music, but uh, nothing says that I couldn't. If well, I had play your favorite music. Right, there you play go. Play your favorite music. I've told you this before, I think, that I only like music I can understand the words. And while you're doing that, I'm going to take time to thank the viewers who I've read their comments every single week or every single video post. Uh -huh. So we have some very loyal viewers. And so I just want to thank those people because it's really nice to see that you guys are still watching and you like the videos and you support our video and our channel and what we're trying to do. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. We love that. We love it. Okay, now come up here. All right. Now, see, I've got my seam where I sewed my two strips together, so I'm not going to ignore that because when I put that in the machine, again, that's going to go against my foot, and that could have potentially fold over. So I'm going to put an extra pin right there. You know, uh, I just think it's part of my religion that um, you just use as many pins as you uh, have. I must you know, have lost my religion if, then. <laughs> if you if you buy a pack of 200 pins, use them all. In the same project, maybe even. Just, you know, that's just my uh, way of thinking. I just don't think you can pin too much. And does it take time? Yeah, it takes time. But it's part of the process. It's fun. Uh, is it a race? It's not a race. Pinning is fun. You know, I enjoy it. I just relax, sit and do it. Now, see... Look, it's flipped because I didn't flip this other side. So I've got to take these out. But that's part of sewing. That's part of the fun of it. Um, 
you know, ripping's not fun. I had to rip one today because I put the sashing on the wrong side and I had to rip it out. Well, but Dawn, it's Monday, but Dawn, yes, can I just tell you since filming these videos, I've learned how to use that seam lip ripper like a pro. Yeah. So no seam is too scary for me because I can just take that ripper and zip it right down there like a zipper. Excellent. I love that. All because of your videos. All because of my videos. Well, we all can teach each other things. That's the best part. Yes, that's uh, true. We just got back from a retreat I did for you the did. Indiana State Quilt Guild. And, you know, there is so much knowledge in that room when you go to retreats that you always, always walk away with one or two more tips than what you went with. Did you walk away with a tip? I did. I walked away with several tips. Very good. I learned how to make a rag quilt. Um, oh, that's right. Raggy on both sides. Both sides. Which, see, I didn't know that before. I came home and shared that with Cappy, and I think she's going to be sharing that with you in one of her uh, raggy quilt uh, Classes updates. or updates? Yeah, updates. Yeah, update updates. to her yep. video. You know, she did that video. Okay, now I'm going to come down here at the end. See, if this had been printed fabric, this wouldn't have happened because I would have known which way was right and which way was wrong. Read your seams. Read your seams. Pay Read your attention. Seams. Do you ever have those days, you guys, when everything's going wrong? I mean, you wake up in the morning... You spill whatever beverage you're, you put your underwear on backwards or inside out. Uh, you spill the dog food all over the floor. Uh, when you crack open the egg, it breaks and you wanted your egg over easy. I mean, you just have those days when everything that you do goes wrong. Everything. Those are not the days to be so imprecise. Okay, those are the days to either cut out a quilt that's not too complicated or it's the day where you just sit and look through magazines, quilt magazines and get ideas. I have those days and uh, they're few and far between, but also sewing late at night. Mm. You know, I allow myself to make three mistakes and then I'm done. Mm. You know, you go three mistakes, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going to bed. Because there's just some times when you just have to give up the ghost. You just can't deal anymore. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to sew this on. And the reason I'm going to all this trouble is because I want to show you how to put on sashing without any cornerstones. It's easy with cornerstones because you can just line the seams up. But when you don't have those seams to line up, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. Now, I'm taking my one machine in to uh, be serviced today. I'm always a little nervous. Because, you know, they're my children. Yes, my your baby. My machines are my children. It's like taking your baby to daycare for the first time. I'm telling you. Or school. Yeah. I do have a couple backups. I think I own eight machines. Or or you have a newborn, and then you go back to work for the first time, and then you leave your baby at home. Yeah, I wouldn't know anything about that. There's that. I don't have babies like that. Okay. Or college, drop them off at college. Yeah. You don't have children. Nope. You're too young. You're too young to be having children. You got a lot of living to do, buddy. A lot of living and a lot of loving. Isn't that a country song? I have no idea, but if it's not, it should be. I'm just taking my time making sure that those seams do not get folded up into my uh So walk us through. Are you pulling on anything? I'm not pulling on is anything. Is the machine pulling the fabric Oh, through? the machine is doing all the work. Is your fingers just kind of 
my, going with the fabric? My fingers right here. These fingers uh -huh. are feeling that that seam is flat. Okay. Okay. So I am not... See, I'm not doing any kind okay. of stretching, any kind of um, forcing. I'm not okay. forcing anything. See, I can just feel that that's got a lump in it, and I just want that to be smoothed out. So you, you kind of took the time to smooth that I out. I did, because I could feel that it had a lump. Same with this one. I can feel it has a little lump. I don't know why well, it's I think lumpy. It, I think it goes over the that seam right there on the bed of the machine and opens it up. You think? Yeah, that's what happens on my machine. So I have to, when I get to that point, I stop, flatten it go. back now, out. Now see, this one feels perfectly flat. The feed dogs. This one feels perfectly flat. I didn't have to <clears> check it. I check think, it before you wreck it. I think what had happened is I forgot to press a couple of the seams. Because it's Monday. I'm blaming it on the day of the week. That's what I'm blaming it on. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Yep. It's a change in temperature, folks. Oh, it's a beautiful day, though. It's oh, crispy. Oh, my gosh. It's so nice. You know, it makes you want to eat an apple and sit have back hot and have apple cider. With some uh, yeast donuts. Oh, that's that just says fall to me. And take a walk and step on mm. crumpled leaves and listen Didn't to Didn't you sound. wear your wool jacket today? Oh, my God. I wore my wool coat. I love it. My wool jacket. I was wearing it in the store, and then I came into the sauna and then got to do hot. the video. I'm like, why don't I take this off before we start? Yeah, it got too hot, didn't it? I was thinking that they didn't turn on the heat yet, uh -huh. but... But they did. But they did. But it's still now, nice these scissors cool. are getting in my way, so I'm going to put them over here in my little... Little scissor holder. Scissor, my little... Utensil holder. Caddy there. I forget what those are called, but man, I can't live without them. It's that's... called It's So Emma. Oh, that's the, the people who make it. Stash and store. Stash well, that is store. that is what it is. It's a stash and store. I even Storm have a and stash. I even have a little one about that size right there that little I baby. travel with. Yeah. And everybody at the retreat was loving on it because you know it just keeps all your stuff right there. You don't have to dig. Oh, your... speaking of, we had somebody come in and want to know what this machine was so they could buy it because they have one of the larger Janomies. Uh -huh. They have like the I think she has the N7, and she was wanting a machine that she can take to her retreats and classes and stuff and so she came and bought this one and this one is the 4120 qdc now that means quilting edition and that means it comes with a quarter inch foot i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think it also comes with a walking foot it comes with all kinds of goodies and it comes with a little tr uh, table oh it's really nice i love this little machine the price on it's not too bad for what you get. You get it's the... perfect for piecing. Yep. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm to the end of the row here. I'm take this pin out. Does it match? Did well, you go over? Well, of course it matches. Let's see. Show me. Oh my gosh. Look. Not over, not under. Right. On that edge. That's impressive. Right. Now, I'm not going to press this open for time's sake. Okay? Now, if I was home... I'd be pressing this open, but I know you don't have all day to watch me here. So I'm going to press it towards the uh, sashing, just simply because I can come back. And press it open? And press it open Very later. Very cool. I want to make sure, though, I get it nice and flat. Taking my time with it because, see, this is where if you don't take your time, you could press it and it still could have some fabric underneath that fold. And are you doing both sides? So you press it over to the back, you press it on the back side and then are you pressing it on the front side too? I'm pressing it on the front side. I'm not pressing it on the back side. Okay, so you're folding it under on the, on the back see side how, and pressing it on top. See how the seam is to the top here uh -huh, uh -huh. and I'm just laying this over oh, like that it's like magic. and I'm pushing with the edge of my iron I'm just pushing okay I'm not stretching but look what I just did to this what happened oh it got see look at all that uh, see now that upsets me this is why I press from the back and I press the seams open because then you can avoid it 
I can avoid that. Ah. Look at how beautiful that lays. And the wool mat does make a difference. It everybody. does. It does. Now, let me tell you that if I had made this longer uh -huh. and I went to cut it, uh -huh. there's nothing says that I couldn't get that just a little smidgen off and be off a little bit there. Uh -huh. And then my whole quilt would be off. You know, or what if I cut it too long? Uh -huh. Just a smidgen off yep. like that. If yep. my ruler would slip or something. That's why it's so important to have it exactly the length that you need it to be in the first place instead of trying to stretch it into some measurement that some paper says it should be. You gotta look and see what it is. Now comes the tricky part, okay? So, I'm gonna move this, all this off of my table. This is my top border. I mean, my top uh, row. This is my top row. And luckily, both of my rows measured the same. So, you know, that's just the way it was. So now, this is my second row. And it goes like this. Okay, so instead of just pinning it on and hoping that these things uh, line up <laughs> and hoping that they line up, crossing your fingers and your toes and your legs and everything else, hoping that they line up, you got to make sure they line up. Okay? I see the dilemma now without the cornerstone. Yeah. I couldn't picture it in my head. Yeah. See, if there were a cornerstone right you here, the, you the, had we put a cornerstone right there, we would have these the seams. seams to match these up. But we don't have anything to match them up. Nothing. We got nothing. Ooh, nothing, honey. So what we're going to do... What? ...is we're going to lay this down. What? And see that? I see it. And we're going to... Line those up. What? Yep. Look at that. And, and, that's not all. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Uh, take my ruler. I'm going to lay it on that seam. And give myself a little mark. Right in the seam allowance there. Chalk? Chalk. Your favorite marking tool. My favorite marking tool is chalk. You better believe it. Now, also, a sliver of soap is really nice. See that? I'm going to give myself a little mark. I'm going to make sure it stays in the seam allowance. Nice. Oh, okay. so you're not going farther up than a quarter of an inch. Right. I'm going to try not to. If I do, it'll just dust right out. Yep. Dust right off. Now, is this a trick well, you've this, ever seen? This is worth the price of admission. I'm telling you right now, I am going to get a pin. I'm going to pin this in because my table's not long enough. Right. And you got to have something to put a little, you don't want to slide the whole thing down as you pull the top row down. Right. Get this lined up. Lay this out. Trying to eyeball that it's about the same distance, you know. Mm -hmm. Quilter's geometry. Now let me tell you, if this is not important to you, and you just want to sew it together, hey, go for it. I don't think I'm going to be doing that, Dawn. Uh, you sew without pins, Peter. I bet this, you would be doing no, this. No, I, I think I'd have to mark it. You would? I think so, because it would be obvious if it didn't line up. If you it would it be very obvious <laughs> if your rows are not uh, parallel to each other. The only other. way it wouldn't be obvious is if the quilt was crumpled up on the bed. There you go. Or on the sofa. Or on the while you're watching While you're watching the game or something. Or outside. Or the Olympics. Okay, 
Ah, uh, my dad had to go without the TV last night. Our TV, I don't know what happened to it with the channel stopped. The AT&T was oh, rebooting no. or something. Oh, I don't no. know. So he didn't get to watch TV, so he had to listen to music with me. And he was pretty bored. But we'll get the repair man in today, hopefully. Okay, see how see how it doesn't take a lot of time, but it's so worth the time. Okay? Just got one little border here. I wonder what television series or music that the viewers listen to when they quilt. Hmm. Interesting. That would be nice to put into the comments. Uh-huh. Maybe maybe we can discover a new podcast that now, we Now see I'm not of. just Yeah. I'm not just laying this out. I'm making You're sure these up line up. Up here, right? Right. See, I'm matching them seams up. And then you're coming down here and doing some marking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice ruler, by the way. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to have to scoot again. It's amazing you can make an entire quilt top with such a little space, Dawn. I know it. I know it. Okay, I already marked that one. Now when I pin, see now this is, is going to be come over. over here? Well, see, it didn't line up, so I have to Tuck make it, it line bit. up and line up. Now it's lined up. All right. It was being willful. Mm -hmm. Fabric does sometimes have a mind of its own. All righty. Now when I take it to pin it, sit down to pin, all I have to do now, Look at oh, that. I was gonna say, where'd they go? I didn't mark that one. We're just going to assume that it's going to fall in place if all these other ones do. If I was home, I'd get back up and mark that one. And, um, and I checked. It's right sides together, everybody. Right sides together. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's important. Okay, so here, see, we've got a mark right there. See it? It's going to move that seam right to there. This one has a little line. Just go ahead and do that one. You can see I fell a little short there. I don't know uh, right there, but I'm going to let that work into my seam allowance. See how it's straight there, uh -huh. but then the fabric comes down. Oh, but then uh -huh, I, but uh -huh. then I put it so that it's right there because uh -huh. I know I have squared these up. Uh -huh. So I know that that is my eight and a half. And that just falls into my seam allowance. Okay. Is that going to bother me? No, because my seam allowance is going to be clear down here. That's a plenty of fabric to catch. And, no And then another deal. thing is, this right here where it's a little bit, does it have some slack on this white layer? No. Okay. It was just the way you were holding it. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's perfectly straight. Okay. It might be an illusion because that dips I down like that. I think it's like an that. illusion. Dips down like that. Okay, now look, there's no seams to match up here. I don't have yellow lines on all these seams because actually all I'm worried about is my sashing lining up. As long as it's lining up, everything else is going to line up. Will fall into place. If you want to pin, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. But let me tell you, it's going to make the difference between something that your eye is going to be pleased with looking at or whether you have to tilt your head back and forth to get your quilt to be straight in your vision instead of being straight on the wall or the bed or whatever. Now, I had fun putting my little room together. I, got, I was looking for new decorations. I got some decorations here that I'm going to change out every uh, season. So right now I've got it all set for fall. And I love the little mini quilt up there. That's Isn't that beautiful. fun? That's uh, one of those uh, Kim Deal what? Are you talking about that yes. one? Yes. That's yep. one of those Kim Deal whatnots. The why nots? Yeah, the, oh, Mr. Whatnots. This is a quilt that was already in the room that we just made good use of because it went with the yeah. season. 
and it's nice. And I like how she's got that hung on the point. That makes it nice. So see, there's no thinking about it. Once I have those marks on there, there's just no, um, no second guessing. It just gets to be so easy to just put that on. I'm gonna go down here. I can't, I can't wait to flip your calendar to November. Ooh, why is that? Because I know what quilt's going to be November. Yeah, the October one's pretty, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is You pretty. know, that would be beautiful in that new cheddar and coal uh, fabric that we just got in. Stop teasing me because I, I didn't get a fat roll yet. Wouldn't that be pretty with It would that? be amazing. Yeah, that would be a pretty quilt. And then there. I would have to have some purple in there, like you said. Yeah, to make it pop. Yeah. So, that bundle that you took home of Cheddar and Cold, did you uh -huh. have fun with it? I did. I laid it out. I refolded it. Yes. So that it fits into my containers that I have at home. And uh, then I restacked it, you know, to make the colors go. And then I kind of played around with, oh. you know, uh, putting, you know, different, uh -huh. different, one, different uh -huh. prints different together. together. and. That's my favorite thing to do, oh, is yeah. to take it apart and See, put that, prints together. That's another thing you can do when you're having a bad day and you can't really sew, is to play in your fabric. Nothing, nothing is more calming or soothing than playing in your buttons or playing in your fabric. I'm just here to tell you. And can I just say that after we did that video on the Cheddar and Coal, we had a customer come in probably in within 15 to 20 minutes to buy that last fat roll. I know. And then last, um, on Saturday night when I was working, I had a customer come in that wanted to get one, but we didn't have it. So she emailed, uh-huh. She emailed, we are, we, she emailed Jennifer to let her know that she wanted to buy it. Now that came out. See, see uh, how perfect that how came out. How do you do that? Well, you measure, you measure and you pin, you pin and you measure. And, you know, if it didn't can't come out right, there would be a reason, and I'd have to go out back and figure out why it didn't turn out right. You sound like you're going to take the quilt and spank it, take it out back and take figure out, out why. Take it back to the wood shed, <laughs> to the cotton shed. Okay, now we're going to sew. Got my quarter-inch foot on. It's just going to ride along here. Now look, this kind of rised up a little bit. I'm going to readjust. Ooh, I've got to take these pins out. I'm going to readjust down here. I'm always adjusting. I'm not ever pulling or pushing. I'm just always adjusting. I can feel with this hand what's going on underneath me. I don't ever have a, my, my quilt, when my quilt gets bigger, I'm going to have to take this away. Mm, okay? okay? Because I'll never let my quilt bunch up. Mm -hmm. That's just not who I am. Okay, I want this all to be laying out so that I can feel it. So I can feel what's going on. Sometimes I'll even get an extra little uh, TV tray or something to hold the weight if the quilt is really huge and I need more room out there. Sometimes I'll get a table and put here or an ironing board or something. Make it the same height as my table and ironing board is always good for that. So that the weight isn't hanging over, pulling my seam. Now see, this is very lightweight right now. But if this was uh, flannel or that, what's that fuzzy stuff called? Shannon, what is that? Cuddle. Cuddle. If this was cuddle or minky, or minky yeah, that something that was heavy. Okay, now that was our intercom system. Sorry about that. Just it is a time. it is a functioning brick and mortar store, folks. It is okay. Now watch. Look at this, Peter. How I've got a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not, but a little lip of the gray. Ooh. 
So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to know that I've got to kind of pull that back. I don't know why I didn't put a pin there, uh -huh. but that's what happens when uh -huh. you don't put a pin. So are you pulling or are you pushing? No, I'm pulling. This is my underneath side. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And because this had kind of gone like that, uh -huh. see, and I could see my back piece, it needs to be lined up. Okay, so you're talking about what's gently, underneath I'm it. gently pulling that till it becomes even. If I had pinned that, I wouldn't have had a problem there. Gotcha. But I had I missed that one. Missed it. Don't run over your pins. You'll be taking your machine to the doctor. It'll get out of alignment, and then your bobbin thread and your top thread will connect, and you'll wonder why your stitches aren't pretty. It's not bunching up, it's not doing, it's really laying nice and flat. And I don't know, it might have taken me, I don't know, 15 minutes to put this on, pinning it and everything. I don't care. It's the process, it's enjoyable. I'm here with Peter, I'm here with my sewing machine. You know, I'm here at always. We're here stitches. with all the viewers that are watching. And all of you guys are here with me and Peter. And we're just enjoying the day and enjoying the process. And you know what's fun about having a quilt is the memories. You the know, memories, yes, the memories. There's always memories associated with uh, a quilt for me. And so I'm going to remember that I sewed this on YouTube. And I took you guys along with me as I made all the elements. And I got to share with you guys you know, a little bit of a how-to. And if you guys have a different way of doing it, by all means, do whichever way you're comfortable. Just because I do it this way doesn't mean it's the only way. The nice thing about the YouTube format, Dawn, is we can learn from each other too because in the comments people will write, you know, what works for them and right. somebody might read that and they might want to try that. Right. And, and then and you learn to have all these different ways that... It's not on camera. We have all these different ways that we can learn from each other just from it being in the comments. Yeah. So it's super wonderful. Hey, I was watching a video on YouTube and I learned just as much from the comments as I was watching the video sure. because all these other people were sharing their experiences. Right, right. That's awesome. It becomes a community. It is. A virtual community. Okay. Dawn's being modest about her calendar girl quilt. This is my quilt. I love my new my quilt that I did. And again, uh, the cheddar is my you know my heartstrings uh, for the cheddar. I love cheddar fabrics. Now look, look at that. Look at how parallel that is. Let me get a ruler. Look at how that seam lines right up. This is not a skew back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and press this and then put it up on my wall so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This is going to be a beautimous quilt. Thank you, Cory Yoder, for the pattern. Yeah! Maybe somebody at Moda wrote the pattern. I don't know. Thank look, you, thank you, Moda, for the pattern. Look here, how there's <laughs> strings. Now, when I press, I always take these strings out. I don't leave those strings just uh, lollygagging in my quilt because if I forget to take those out and the quilter quilts them in, then that's just a nasty looking quilt. You get deductions for that. You get deductions. Got a nice trash can right here. I learned that from you, Dawn. Did address you? them. Address them as you come across them. Don't right. try to do it all when you get done with the quilt top. Right. Because if you do it as you press here and there, then they're already done. It's right. taken care of. Exactly. Okay. Now I'm going to put this up on the wall. And if I don't get a gasp or two about how beautiful this is, I'm going to be disappearing. Do you want me to get some of the staff in here so they can uh, gasp? No, I, okay. can, I can actually gasp myself, really. I'm gasping. 
I got another string right there. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. I do too. I do too. I, I love the pinks beautiful. and the greens. They really go well with that gray. Oh. And how simple. What a simple, fun pattern, right? All you have to do is make 36 of these walks and then put the sashing on. There is a border that's good. There's the, the same color as the sashing. There's going to be a skinny border. Then there's going to be a little bit wider border. And then I'm going to be able to call this a quilt. So I hope you learned a little bit about cornerstones and sashing and how to put on sashing if you don't have cornerstones. It's a little bit trickier, takes a little bit more time, but it's well worth it. So if you have some quilts that you've put together with sashing, with cornerstones, and without, please post them right here on our YouTube channel and come back and see us. We should be back here next Monday right here at the Sew Machine. Come visit. Bye-bye.